In Portland last night, C.J. McCollum went off for 40 in a win over the visiting Bucks. Some of that damage came at the expense of Milwaukee rookie Dante DiVincenzo, who was left scrambling occasionally to try to find McCollum, let alone to stop him. Afterward, McCollum described the Bucks sending a rookie to guard him as, quote, very disrespectful. That was last night. The night before, Denver's Jamal Murray got the Celtics Irish up by launching a three before the buzzer in an effort to turn his career high 48 point night into a 50 plus point night. Kyrie Irving was so fired up, he threw the ball into the stands after Murray's miss, for which he was fined 25 grand. Irving said he's over it, but called it a BS move. That's paraphrasing. Uh, Murray later said he meant no disrespect, even though the C's, or at least some of them, clearly felt disrespected. So, 3D, we, we thought we'd talk about this concept. Uh, what constitutes disrespect in the NBA? And I'll start with you by asking how often or how many times during your NBA career did you feel personally disrespected on the basketball floor? Uh, man, I didn't feel disrespected on my end, but I was obviously a part of a game back in history that one of my teammates uh, you can argue that was being a little respect, disrespectful to the game back when uh, Anthony Bowie threw the ball off the backboard to get an extra rebound to get his triple-double, and that came up a big uproar with the Detroit Pistons at the time when Doug Collins was, was the head coach. So there have been other situations very similar to that. And I think, quite frankly, Matt and Sekou, what we're going through right now in Minnesota, some people think the way Jimmy Butler is going about his situation could be disrespectful for the game because you can be a little more professional about how you go about your business. It's an interesting point. You know what what uh, what happened with the Magic? I mean, to me, that's more bush league than disrespectful, <laughs> right? I, I mean, yeah. I don't know that it's disrespectful. It's just <laughs> cheesy as much as that. Yeah, I mean, I think we're going through the age of sensitivity a little bit for right about sure, now. For sure, yeah. Where everybody feels slighted, you know, if somebody scores an extra bucket on you at the end of a game. I, I would argue that some of these guys need to toughen up just a little bit. Yes. I mean, yes. and hey, if, why not employ some old school tactics? If a guy is working you over, get a little physical. You don't have to do anything dirty, but right. you know, let him know. Put a body you, on. Yeah, put, yeah. put some flesh Guard him. on the man getting 48, and he might yeah. not get 50. I just, right. I feel like sometimes these guys are way too sensitive. They, they know that the highlights are going to be on all night on NBA TV. Maybe that's what it is. They don't want to have to stop <laughs> watch this and get texts from their buddies all night. But everybody needs but to. Say, but, but say cool. What about the other 40 points? Yeah, why, exactly. why are we waiting for the 48 exactly. and the 49th and the 50th point? Why are we not trying to stop the guy? Why are the guy? Why is the guy not fouling out three or four guys, Matt, living at the free throw line going 20 for 22 or whatever that is versus the way what Murray was 19 of 30 from the field? Yeah. So obviously no one was slowing him down. Every, every basketball court I remember, there being a conversation. When somebody's cooking like that, there is a conversation on the other team was somebody better do something. Yep. Somebody better somebody. foul out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, and you, and you hear that from Mikhail and, and Isaiah, yes. all the guys from the 80s in particular. When Granted, it was a different game, right. but that guy's going to get knocked down uh, if he's anywhere near the rim when he's got that do kind something. of night going. Um, so for you, 3D, what is disrespect in, in the context of an NBA basketball game? Well, I think the biggest thing it was the other night when, when, you're, when you're beating a team more than 10 or 15 points in a, in a shot clock or the game clock's going down and the guy's trying to get some points the last minute, that is the biggest thing that really irritate guys on the inside. Now, as a player, what, what C.J. McCollum was saying the other night was, hey, guys, I think I'm a top 20, top 25 guy in this league today. I know I can get 40 points, and you're going to put a rookie on me? But that's not that's, disrespectful. That's just, Matt, that's just Matt, a bad that's, coaching idea. That's a Matt, bad strategy. That, well, as a player, he felt disrespected that you put a rookie on him versus, hey, I'm C.J. McCullen. Put somebody on me that maybe might be in their third or fourth or fifth year and maybe be known as a better defensive player versus putting a rookie on me, Matt. You know, maybe because I was a terrible player, <laughs> I'd feel really lucky if they put a terrible defender on me. Because so. then maybe I got a shot, right? <laughs> by, by the way, the sensitivity thing extends to fans, and you know this as well as yes. I, as a yes. voter, if you post your votes oh. yes. and the guy they like is second team, not first team all NBA or didn't make or is second or third in defensive player of the year voting, then they say you disrespected him. Oh, yeah. Well, you have to rank them somehow or other. It doesn't it's not a matter of disrespect. It's who you think deserved what spot. You should nothing nothing and to that point, Matt, recently when you, when you look around the league with all the contracts and all the big money that's thrown around, 
when a guy gets a big deal, say cool, and he doesn't come back in shape, the guys really, really get irritated and say, now you're disrespecting the game where now you're not working hard, you got that big contract, and now you're not living up to it. So you're starting to hear more guys talk about that as well as being disrespectful to the game. You know what? I, I'm more in agreement with that than anything else we've talked about. I mean, <laughs> yes. that's disrespectful to your teammates. Yes. If you have that sort of lofty position, you're supposed to help carry a team and you that's don't right. show up ready to play? Well, that's what's right. disrespectful is if I'm cooking you and I got 48 points, and you got the nerve to complain about me trying to get 50 when you know if the shoe was on the other foot, yes. you're trying to get 50. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Like, don't, don't have selective amnesia about what's right. disrespectful and what's not. Like, for instance, in, in Chicago the night, no one thought Clay and the Golden State Warriors were being disrespectful. They were up by 20 something against the Bulls, and Clay was still trying to get that 14 3. They were saying that wasn't disrespectful. For them. Absolutely. Exactly. So I didn't, so it's like, I think to this conversation we have tonight, some of these guys need to dust off some of the sensitivity, guys. Just dust some of the sensitivity off. Just guard people. Guard people. That too. That yes. might help. Yeah. <laughs>